Algebra 2 Honors, Lesson 13.5, The Law of Cosines. Did law of sines, but doesn't always work. So we look for situations like this one. We say, can we do this? Well, let's try law of sines. We'd uh, have to use this 57 degree angle. Uh, but we don't know little c. And then we can pick either one. Let's go with sine of a. Um, and we know 18, so we have two unknowns. Notice this is side angle side. We could find the area. We just can't solve the triangle. So the area would just be 1 half 24 times 18 times sine of 57. No, I'm not going to blast it out. We're not trying to find the area. We're trying to solve these triangles. So here's another one. Uh, if we did an angle, we'd do sine of, pick a random one, A over 15 would be sine of, pick another random one, I'll pick C this time, over 7. And uh, again, we have two unknowns. So we can't actually solve these. Need a new law. It's called the law of cosines. Uh, I like deriving it. Most people have no idea what's going on, but I don't know. It's fun. Here I set it up. I gave us an A, B, C triangle. It's not a right triangle. Everybody looks at it goes, oh, A squared plus B. No, 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 no. However, I drew an altitude down to give myself some right angles. And I called one of the pieces X. Therefore, the other one has to be the whole thing minus X, B minus X. And it allows me to have a little fun here. So I can go A squared equals h squared plus b minus x squared. And that's just this right triangle. Crank it out, we get h squared plus b squared minus 2bx plus x squared. Just a little algebra, nothing flashy. a squared equals h squared plus x squared. So I just took the x squared and moved it over here. Haven't changed anything. Just rearranged it. But if you look at this triangle, x squared plus h squared equals c squared. That's using this triangle there. And we have h squared plus x squared right there, so we can sub in c squared. Looks a lot like Mr. Pythagoras, but there's this other stuff over here. Hmm. Well, we don't actually get this thing when we do a triangle. We're trying to solve it. We just get the sides and the angles. We want to make a law that just uses those. So let's look at this angle, and let's go with cosine. I mean, heck, it is the law of cosine. Cosine of A equals adjacent X over hypotenuse C. C equals... Pardon me. X equals C cosine. It's supposed to be a little C of A. So we can sub that in right here. And I'm going to bring this up and over, and I'm going to change colors just to make it a little easier to see. I'm also going to flip these two just to make life alphabetical. Makes it a little bit easier to memorize these, and you should be able to memorize these. It's not much. That is the law of cosines. You can write it three different ways. Notice if the A is here, the big A is here. And notice if A is here, then B and C, B and C are there. So if I did B squared, then it'd be A squared plus C squared minus 2AC. Just follow them over. Cosine of... Notice my horrendous handwriting. I'm trying. It's just not happening. C squared. I'll try and write this one neatly. A squared. B squared. 2AB. Cosine C. And this will enable us to solve any triangle.
there is one rule I'll explain in a minute. Let's always solve the big angle first. There's no ambiguous case for law of cosines like there was for the law of sines. So if you find the biggest angle, it'll say that it's an obtuse angle, 128 degrees. In, in the law of sines, it won't. It always goes into that first quadrant and says, oh, it's 82 degrees. Well, you're supposed to know it's 108 degrees. Very confusing stuff. Don't have to do that as long as you solve the big angle first. Doesn't apply here. It's already set for you. You're going to find a little C over here. And you're going to find it by going C squared equals 24 squared plus 18 squared minus 2 times 24 times 18 times cosine of 57 degrees. Now I've got to bust out my calculator. This is actually probably the most challenging part of law of cosines. A lot of people make mistakes when they're blasting it out on the calculator. So just double check before you hit the enter button. Make sure you're in degrees. Make sure you hit cosine and not sine. So I get c squared equals 429.4. Now I take the square root of both sides. I get c equals 20.7. Not done, want to solve the whole triangle. Now we just go back to law of sines, which is a lot easier to use. I'm going to do the smallest angle here across from the 18 because I know that's going to be an acute angle. Then I'm going to let B figure out with 24. I don't expect to have any problems, but solve the big angle first is for um, when you have A, B, and C. I'll show you that in just a second. So change colors, make it a little easier to see. Law of sines now. Sine of 57 over 20.7 equals, let's do A, sine of A over 18. A equals, I'm going to do it all at once. Second sine, 18 times sine of 57, close parentheses, divided by 20.7. So angle, we round to the nearest degree, 47 degrees, which seems about right. Across from 20.7 is 57, so across from 18 should be smaller, but not that much smaller. So it looks about right. And then to find, I believe it's angle B that's left, we just subtract it all from 180. We get 76. So it turns out it doesn't matter at all which side or angle we did first in this case. You just have to think about it a little bit. A lot of people want to be dumb and just kind of crank things through and not have to worry about it. Well, you got to think. It's a tragedy. Welcome to the world. Now, we know all the sides. Do the biggest one first. 15 squared equals 9 squared plus 7 squared minus 2 times 9 times 7 times cosine cosine of A. I'm going to crank all this out. Um, I will never do this again. 225 equals 81 plus 49 minus 126 cosine of A. Here's where all the screw-ups happen right here. Uh, a lot of people just lose their heads and don't do the algebra right. I'm going to say 1 minus 49. So I get 95 equals negative 126 cosine of A. This is going to be an obtuse angle because we're going to have a negative here. So A is cosine of the negative first. Ninety-five over negative one hundred and twenty-six. A equals Cosine's negative in the second quadrant. We better get an obtuse angle, and we do 140 degrees.
And that's why we do the big one first. So if we'd done a lot of signs after, we'd have found that that would have been, um, oh, reference angle is 40 degrees, 40 degrees, which would have been wrong. So you just have to be careful. You have to use a little bit of intelligence here. I've had some really great examples in class of people who are just being smart when they do these problems instead of just plugging away and praying things work out. Now we've got law of sines to finish off. It doesn't really matter which one I do. I, I like doing the smallest one because I know that's going to be an acute angle. So sine of C over 7, C equals. Notice how long it takes me. Got to be very careful. Make sure I put it all in correctly. Gets me 17 degrees. Now it actually got me 17.45 or 6. So there's going to be some rounding errors on these. I really don't like rounding my degrees to the nearest degree, but it seems to be what standard practice is. 180 minus 140 minus 17. B equals, let me write this in, 17 degrees. B equals 23 degrees. Interesting. Yeah, would appear to work. I thought the smaller angle belonged with the smallest side, so I am a little concerned I made a mistake here. Yeah, I wrote it wrong. Okay, good. So at least I'm not too stupid. Put in the wrong spot. 17 should be across from the small side, 7, which it is now, and 23 goes up here. Those are the only two problems you need law of uh, cosines for. So that's it. Let's talk about it. We got a triangle. We're given, uh, let's go with angle, side, angle. So I really don't care. Man, let's change color. Easy to read. 20 degrees, 6, 42 degrees. Angle, side, angle. That's law of cosines. You'll then use law of science to finish it off, but, oh, pardon me, no, that's that's wrong. Find the missing angle. And then use law of science. Now we just showed two of them. These were side, 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 angle, side. That's why I got confused. And these were both law of cosines. Be careful. Watch out for that law of sines case because you also do use law of sines once you've got them established as law of cosines. We've also got things like this. This is angle, angle, side, law of signs, after you find the third angle. We already did last unit, 20 degrees, 6, 8. This is angle, side, side. So this is an ambiguous case. Law of signs. And that's a pain. That's the hardest one. That's the one you want to cry when you see it. You go ahead, cry. I don't mind. And that's really all the cases. Angle, angle, angle doesn't work. Uh, you, you need at least one side. Um, but that's it. Two angles, one side. All the orders that you possibly could have. It's a lot of work. Get going on your homework. Good luck.